Hi everyone, I'm Natalia. Welcome to my channel. Today is um, a sort of a viewer request, um, or more rather more like a suggestion by one of one of you. Thank you so so much that commented on one of my uh, videos and mentioned that there is a tarot deck that you feel a lot of resistance to, and you're thinking that that resistance is probably telling you something about the fact that you need to use the tarot deck. And I commented back and I said, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely telling you something about that you have to really use this tarot deck. There's something there for you. And I mentioned that I'm going to do a video on this because I love, 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 love topic of resistance because it's so fascinating to me. Primarily, due to the fact that I experienced a lot of resistance in my life and a lot of things and continue to challenge myself in overcoming resistance. And I have learned so much about what resistance really means over the years, which has completely, completely changed my relationship to resistance and how I see it now versus how I saw it before. In fact, I love this topic so much. I do have a class in my online classes. It's called uh, Dining with Resistance. You may have taken it. Uh, you may be familiar with it. Uh, it's a great class where I dissect what resistance is, how to spot it. And uh, there's a spread that I introduced called Dining with Resistance on how to uncover what blocks you. So if you want to check it out, link is in the description box. Feel free to take a look. So Resistance, having said, is such a deep, deep, deep topic for me, and I love it so freaking much. In the past, I have always saw resistance as, as potentially a sign of a warning, right? So if I'm resisting something, ooh, that's, that's my intuition is telling me, stay away, there's something dangerous here, something to maybe uh, be watchful for. I've been taking that for some time in my life until I realized that looking at resistance as your intuition is telling you something to be cautious of has been holding me back from achieving so many things I want to achieve and achieving and following so many dreams I wanted to follow. And I know that it is like that for a lot of you. It could be resistance to uh, dropping out of your current job and going into grad school and pursuing what you really want to do and what you love to do. It could be resistance to getting out of a relationship and getting to a new one. It could be resistance to committing and getting or legalizing, getting married within the relationship you're in. It could be resistance to having children. It could be resistance to starting a new creative project, you name it. Now, of course, Resistance is not always an indication that we actually need to do that which we resist, right? I Obviously, it's there for a reason. And this is where it becomes very handy to be able to tell, to be able to win out when the resistance is there because it is you got is telling you stay away. And when it's a resistance there as an indicator that you actually need to pursue it, that you actually need to move forward to visit. And that's what I want to talk about, how to distinguish that, how to spot it, and then apply it to some of the terror decks and help you recognize terror decks that you do feel resistance to and what they can be telling you about the fact that you need to use them. Over the course of my lifetime, oh my God, I sound so old when I said over the course of my lifetime, like I, like I have lived a lifetime, please, such a baby still. But over the course of my, um, my experiences, in life, let's put it that way. There has been a book that I, to this day, reference, refer to, sometimes reread, that has changed drastically my understanding to resistance. And it is Stephen Pressfield. You may have heard about this book, The War of Art. And as you can see, it is beloved text of mine. I have gifted this copy away. I have recommended this copy away. I have quoted the text from it so many times. I have used the knowledge in this book when I talk about resistance so many times. I used it with my personal clients, you name it. The best book ever been written on resistance, hands down. I love it. It changed my relationship to resistance. And in the book, what Stephen is, is talking about is he's distinguishing how oftentimes that which we resist 
is actually our soul's calling. And I have two things that I highlighted that I want to read it for you. This is his rule of thumb that I quote all the time. Rule of thumb, the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel toward pursuing it. Let me read it for all of us again, because I felt this so many times in my life. I felt this incredible amount of resistance when I started podcast on this channel, because I knew I wanted to be more vulnerable and more raw and more transparent in the podcast. And I had so much resistance and I knew I needed to do it. Rule of thumb, the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel toward pursuing it. From now on in my life, every time I feel resistance, I reevaluate what am I resisting. Now, as I said earlier, not all resistance is something to pursue, right? Something resist because genuinely it's not something you need to pursue. So how to tell the difference? What I can say for myself is one of the ways that I tell the difference is resistance is open almost is going to be synonymous with also feeling fear. Because when we resist something, there's also going to be an element of being afraid to do it. But resistance is going to be tied to taking an action towards something. And there's going to be that fear. So me starting podcast, for example, accompanied by fear of how I was going to be seen, how all of you are going to perceive me, all of those things. And it was scary for me because if you know me from my previous channels that I deleted and just from this channel alone, I tend to be like very heady in my head, very analytical. I present content in a more... Um, in a more heady way, thinking oriented. And so that's kind of also my defense function and my role. Um, but it's also my gift to be able to present com complex subject matters in more digestible form. And while it is a great gift, that gift missing the feeling uh, component a lot of times, that heart is missing, right? And the podcast I knew was going to be the possibility for me to be more raw, more open with my heart, which was so scary for me because I was so afraid to move away from this persona I have created um, on this channel because we all create personas, believe it or not, whether you realize it or not, how you show up is not exactly how you are. Um, and personas are essential because we can't just be completely raw and vulnerable all of the time. We got to have boundaries. And we have to have limits to how much of ourselves are we going to allow others to see. So when I decided to do that podcast, there was resistance and there was fear. And the ways that I have learned over my life, there it goes again, over my lifetime, the way that I have learned to distinguish between a fear that is good for you and a fear that is you need to actually listen to versus go forward with it. If I continue to wake up and I, I'm still daydreaming about doing this podcast, I'm still thinking about that would be so cool to do, all the while feeling resistance and fear, this is how you know it's your soul's calling. If you're waking up and you want to start that graduate program that you wanted to start, uh, but you're also feeling fear, and especially if there's an element of excitement along with resistance too, this is your soul's calling. If you want to start painting for the first time and you keep thinking about it and then daydreaming, but you feel resistance, that's your soul's calling. So one of the best way to distinguish how it's a resistance that you need to follow through on is that you're actually fantasizing about doing that. You There's part of you that is daydreaming about it. There's part of you that are thinking about it. And that's really, really important. And again, remember, like Stephen says, is it bigger your soul's calling the bigger your resistance is going to be. I want to read one more quote from this book where he says that, and this is where he talks about fear. Are you paralyzed with fear? That's a good sign. Fear is good. Like self-doubt, fear is an indicator. Fear tells us what we have to do. I wish I knew this when I was 20. 
Remember our rule of thumb. The more scared we are of a work or calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. Resistance is experienced as fear. The degree of fear equates to the strength of resistance. Therefore, the more fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and to the growth of our soul. That's why we feel so much resistance. If it meant nothing to us, that'd be no resistance. Get this book. Do yourself a favor. You will not be disappointed. So having said that, now you understand how the resistance and fear go hand in hand and how they're really, really important. And they're actually, they're almost like this universal breadcrumbs that are telling you, yeah, go here, follow this path. You got to go in this direction. The challenge is that we have got so brainwashed and conditioned by society and culture to see resistance and fear as bad, as something to avoid, as something not to deal with. In fact, we have got so numb, we have got so programmed to feel like robots and like zombies when it comes to things such as fear, resistance, anxiety, um, disappointments, any feelings that we associate as negative, we had been taught to avoid, to numb them even more down, have a glass of wine and forget about it. By the way, that's my coping style. Um, do go on a shopping spree and forget it. Buy another tarot deck and forget it. Also my style. <laughs> um, or buy another red lipstick net and forget it. Again, another coping style of mine. Uh, for some people, it is uh, smoke some weed and just go into escapism. Uh, for some people, it is go and have a really, really, um, um, I don't want to say, we call it nurturing, but it's not really a nurturing meal. It's more like this really rich foods meal that then puts our body in a coma to the point where we can't even think about that fear and resistance anymore. So our society and culture conditions us as it has taught us to avoid those things. But the truth is we need to follow those things. We need to go through those things because that's the only way to grow. We don't grow if we are maintaining in the status quo. The minute anything in your life has become is the feeling of content. The minute you feel content, first of all, that's a sign. This is short-lived. It's not going to last. And it's a sign that stagnation is coming, meaning you have already um, mastered whatever it is you needed to master. And now you're feeling content because now you're ready for the next step. It's analogous to lifting heavy weights. Anybody who ever lifted heavy weights knows this. We call it progressive overload. I'm getting like a pro in progressive overload because I've been lifting heavy weights uh, for a year now. Um, we all know this is progressive overload, meaning you're lifting 25 pounds. And then in that last rep, if it's easy, that's content. That's letting you know, add up some weight. You're ready for something more. So anytime you're feeling content in your life, anytime you feel content with your tarot readings, anytime you feel content with your tarot deck, if you feel your deck doesn't challenge you and you actually want a deck that challenges you, remember, not all decks have to challenge us, but if you're looking for the challenge and you just feel really content with your deck, that's a sign you outgrew the deck at least for this particular purpose. And you may be, it may be better for you to try something else. There's a popular phrase we all know, what you resist, persist. And it persists oftentimes not in such good and pretty ways. Meaning, if I resist my soul's calling of um, doing a podcast and opening up my heart, then I continue to persist in this direction. What continues to persist for me is this detriment I have created for myself of being too heady and it's not doing me any good. So this goes to the viewer who asked me or who actually commented rather than asked me uh, that there's tarot deck that you have that you feel resistance to and that's probably indicated that you should use it. Now let's talk about tarot decks because this is interesting. Not every deck, not every deck that we feel pushed away from is one, a sign of resistance and not every deck that we feel a push away from is also something that we need to pursue. The difference, in my opinion, is this. There are some tarot decks 
that I personally have looked at and just immediately the art is not my cup of tea, period. Not my cup of tea. There's no feeling of resistance. It's just not for me. I don't even bother buying it. I know a lot of you have felt exactly the same way. I know there's a lot, ton of decks. It could be my beloved Zos deck. For you, could be. You look at the art and you're like, hmm, not feeling anything. That's not a sign of resistance. That's simple discernment. That you being able to discriminate the fact that the art aesthetically is for you or not for you. That is it. It's like me and my glasses. Love it for me, somebody else, hmm, not for them. This is simple discernment. That is not resistance. And then there's some tarot decks, right? Where you don't know what it is. You can't put a finger on it. And it's not that you hate or love it, but you don't want to really use it. You may be irking away from it. And yet there's part of you that wants to use it. I have the same resistance to right away Smith. I will admit it. And the more I see it sometimes on social media, the more I'm thinking, maybe I can learn to laugh right away. It's because I have so much resistance. And then I'm thinking, I can't pick up right away. It's because, because I've been speaking about how much I hate it. I would be such a hypocrite. <laughs> By the way, that's a huge sign, you guys all, that that's, in fact, I'm resisting because that's probably a deck that's going to do me a world good. And that's probably a deck that I'm going to learn to laugh being very honest but i'm not ready to go there yet stubborn stubborn taurus moon very stubborn well not very stubborn but stubborn so that's one example right another example um what is the deck that i'm the big eyed jessica beckett i think smith maybe i'm wrong i'm sorry guys you know who i'm talking about lucy cavendish and she's the artist uh, jesse uh Jessica Beckett, something, is an artist who does the Big Eyes um, series that Lucy Cavendish. I have all of those oracles that are amazing. I had such resistance to it. I had it, whole collection, got rid of it, and then I got it again. And I just worked through it. I just worked through what was my resistance? What was the deal with it? You know what I realized? I realized that my resistance in using the Big Eye dolls was that every time I used it, my my the persona of my ego that is, oh, you, you're intellectual, you're so smart, and you're using these big idols. That's so stupid and so immature. You're too mature to use it. That's just not intelligent enough. That was That's what was getting in the way. And I learned how to pass through that. And I also learned the gift that that deck is giving me. And now, as you know, it's my beloved, beloved Oracle decks. So definitely, if there's a deck for you out there or Oracle deck where you're feeling something, you don't know what it is, you kind of want to work with it. I really wanted to work with Big Eye Dolls because I loved, loved the artwork. But the fact the, and the theme is that it's it's like little girls bothered me or that it's expressed in a little bit with childlike application bugged the hell out of me. And that was what was glossing over that I needed to work through. You have probably more than one deck. I have another one. I'm trying to think what, but there is another one that I feel same. I really want to work with, but I'm resistant and I'm coming up with reasons to avoid it, but I really want to work with. So what's going on there? So if you have a deck that you feel like that over, that's a golden breadcrumb. The decks that that came into your life for a reason, it bears a gift. It buries a gift. It could be in a form of understanding what underneath that resistance. And it's going to lend you to um, an area of growth and possibility. Or it could be that it lends itself to uncovering something else that you needed to uncover. But it came to you for a reason. And it's, it's, it's magic at you and creating that resistance also for a reason. And you need to follow it. I really encourage you to follow it because... As you all know from what I just read, it is so important to follow the resistance because it's so important to evolution of our soul. And we all want to grow and evolve. So comment below. Let me know. One, if you have read The War of Art, 
What do you think of it? It's a beloved book of mine. And two, um, is there a deck out there that you feel resistant to? And can you tell us what it is? So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you for the viewers so much who um, gave me this idea to do this video because I just love talking about resistance so, so much. And I just, I really love psychological application with these tools because uh, we can do so much with this uh, for ourselves. So thank you so very much. And uh, everybody have a, <laughs> I'm out of the words right now because I've been recording videos after video and um, I can speak. So hope all of you have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.